Hi there, Doug Stimulin with IT Creations with the Dell EMC PowerEdge R650XS server for the cloud, data center, or your own enterprise network. It's got some impressive features with support for dual third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors, hybrid storage options, including NVMe, and it supports up to two terabytes of memory. At 1U, it packs some serious computational power for virtualization, scale out, database, and other high performance workloads. I know, I was thinking the same thing when I reviewed the specs on this system. Two third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors with support for eight memory channels and typically PMEM modules too. Intel says each CPU can handle up to four terabytes of memory. And even though this system has only 16 memory module slots, I was expecting at least four terabytes. But this system peaks at two terabytes of memory. Apparently this system is meant to scale to a point. Licensing for VMware ESXi vSphere means one license per 32 core processor. With two CPUs limited to 32 cores and only two terabytes of memory, that means you can allocate a core or two virtual cores of processing power plus up to eight gigabytes of memory for each virtual machine or virtual desktop instance for peak performance. You can still allocate more or less to each VM, but clearly they are making a concerted effort to provide just enough performance and presumably save themselves some production costs in the meantime. Sometimes just enough is better than too much, especially when a little money is involved. The small control panel on the front left-hand side of the system is outfitted with a system status button with five LED indicators for drives, temperature, electrical, memory, and PCIe. It's also available with Dell's QuickSync 2 wireless indicator, but only on certain models. QuickSync 2 allows you to quickly connect to the system wirelessly using a smartphone or tablet. On the other side is another small control panel with the power on button, iDRAC Direct Micro Port, and an iDRAC Direct Status LED. A VGA port is located right beside this control panel. You have a choice between a configuration with 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch drive base or none at all. With no drive support, the system would be used primarily for computation, in-memory applications, or perhaps a storage area network. The 3.5 inch chassis has four drive base supporting SAS or SATA drive formats, Two 2.5-inch chassis configurations include one supporting 10 hybrid bays with support for SAS, SATA, or NVMe formats, and another that supports NVMe exclusively. Are you interested in the Dell EMC PowerEdge R650XS server? If you are, then for a limited time, you can save up to $500 off a system listed on our site, or one that you configure using our handy-dandy configurator that is valued at $5,000 or more. That's right, just click that link to start configuring today. On the back of the system, you have the option for two more 2.5 inch drive bays that would occupy a drive cage in PCI slots two and three adjacent to the dual redundant PSUs. Those two rear storage bays can provide more than 15 terabytes of additional storage. Another PCI slot is located just above the two integrated RJ45 Ethernet LAN ports offering connection speeds of one gigabit Ethernet and a dedicated integrate iDRAG port for remote management of the system using a standard browser. The adjacent NICs can also be shared with iDRAC with network settings that are set to shared mode. The BOSS riser is also on the back of the system and squeezed between the PCI slots, but we'll take a look at that when we pop the cover off. Next, a USB 3.0 port on top and USB 2.0 port on the bottom. Besides those is a mezzanine card slot for an OCP 3.0 network card, which can be easily installed or replaced without removing the server cover. That last little button is for the system identification. Managing the system can be accomplished a few different ways. Connecting a crash cart on the front panel with a micro USB port and VGA display port. Using the dedicated management port in back, you can also connect to the system remotely, in band or out of band with a direct line to the integrated Dell remote access controller with lifecycle controller. You can also get at chassis management of the system with QuickSync 2 using a smartphone or tablet to connect via Bluetooth using the OpenManage mobile app. IDRAC works with Dell OpenManage to deliver one-to-many management and includes the OpenManage Power Center, Repository Manager, and Storage Management for locally attached RAID disk storage. Dell's management tools provide automation and scripting libraries, plus a single point for stack management with easy integration with Microsoft System Center, VMware vCenter, and Red Hat Ansible, including a few more integrations and connections with open source management software like Nagios and more. Let's get back to the hardware. Now that the cover is removed, you can see the dual CPU sockets behind that bank of seven hot swap fans. In front of that is the drive cage backplane with this particular platform outfitted for SAS SATA with eight 2.5 inch drive bays. Once the top panel on the drive cage is removed, 
there's a dedicated spot, which in this case is occupied by a Perk 11 H755 front SAS controller offering 12 gigabit per second performance. In the event of a power failure, that backup battery pack next to the controller powers the system just long enough to enable data in the cache buffer to be stored to disk. This Perk can support up to 16 drives without a SAS expander, but we only have eight. There are several other controllers to choose from, depending on the chassis configuration and potential workload. As a third generation Intel Xeon scalable processor, it occupies a slightly larger socket, which is incompatible with earlier first and second generation CPUs. In that respect, I do wonder why this is not an entirely different CPU family. In addition to the larger socket, it does support more cores at up to 40 compared to the earlier scalable processor generations, although not on this specific platform. It also features more PCI lanes at 64 compared to only 48 lanes on previous scalable processor versions. PCI 4.02, offering two times the bandwidth compared to PCI 3.0. Also more memory with eight memory channels instead of only six and faster memory too. Each processor is in charge of eight memory module slots for 16 active memory module slots with both processors installed. DDR4 registered DIMM modules are supported with a top speed of up to 3200 megatransfers per second. As previously stated, the CPU is limited to a 32-core version and a thermal design point of 220 watts. 32 cores is also the maximum number of cores available on the gold family of Intel Xeon scalable processors, with only the platinum version supporting up to 40 cores. If you go silver, you're looking at a top core count of 20 physical cores. With two 32-core gold or platinum processors installed, that would be 64 physical cores and 128 virtual threads. For booting the system without using the front drive bays, you have a few options. A BOSS, IDSDM, USB, or the optional rear drive bay with two drives. That optional rear drive cage will provide a little over 15 terabytes of storage, so maybe not the best use for that, even if you can create a hardware RAID. There is a dedicated slot for a boot optimized storage subsystem, or BOSS, at the back of the system, right next to the OCP mezzanine card slot. The BOSS can be used to boot the system, with the BOSS providing a hardware RAID with two M.2 cards. A dedicated slot for a dual SD card module, or IDSDM, is placed right next to the BOSS card slot. It has two SD cards plus a V-Flash card on the other side for storage that can be used by iDRAC. The IDSDM is best used to support an embedded hypervisor and has the added benefit of a mirrored SD card if there are two cards installed. However, it should be noted that VMware no longer supports booting from the SD card. Alternatively, the internal USB, also with a dedicated slot, can be used to boot the system, but can also be used as a security key or mass storage device. Options, options, options. I will mention that the specifications make no mention of support for a GPU, but I suppose theoretically it could be outfitted with a low power T4 or P4, maybe even an A2. That dedicated slot is for the PCI Gen 4 OCP 3.0 card and back that occupies a by 16 link slot. Up to three PCI slots are available, depending on your choice of riser options for riser one and two, each with a PCI 4.0 interface. The PCI slots provide for a number of different network communications, offering one gigabit ethernet to 100 gigabit ethernet, which is the same for the OCP card. The Dell EMC PowerEdge R650XS has some impressive features with dual third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors, hybrid storage, a fairly large memory footprint, and options for I.O. This is a highly flexible platform designed for data warehouse, e-commerce, database, plus high performance computing applications. And at only one U in height, surely there's room to squeeze this system into your existing network. As you ponder that, check out itcreations.com. We are partners with Dell and have this server and many others in stock at any given time. Oh, and if you have any questions on this system or any other, post them in the comments section below or visit our website, itcreations.com and use that chat feature. We're happy to answer any questions. Until next time, I'm Doug Stumann with IT Creations and thanks for watching.